Okay, what we've got here is something a little bit new. Uh, this is the new Roland Cloud uh, Concerto sound engine. Um, and up on the screen, loaded in front of me, is the beta release of the Roland Anthology 1987. Uh, this is a two and a half gigabyte sample set um, dedicated to the sounds of the Roland D50. Um, I've got a Roland D50 sat next to me on a uh, keyboard stand, and I've now got the Roland Cloud Anthology 87 in front of me. Um, what they've done, and this, this confuses me slightly, is Roland, the makers of the Roland D50, the people who designed the synth engine, the sample engine, and all those lovely 8-bit goodnesses, um, have sampled their own synthesizer and created essentially a rompler, a uh, sample playback engine uh, dedicated to playing back the sounds of their synthesizer. Um, this is a, a weird step for Roland. Roland uh, are quite good at making virtual synths. They've made the SH-101, the 201. They've made the... Um, oh, they've made hundreds of them. I mean, if you look back through their through their history, they've made a lot of um, virtual synths. The new System 1000, etc. work very well. They're really good synths. They're just dedicated to standard ADSR and, and um, various oscillators, and it just does the does the job. Uh, what they've done here is they've sampled the D50. Um, I, I don't think it's a bad idea, and sampling a D50 seems like a great plan, but quite literally all you've got with Anthology 1987 is the internal ROM presets of a D50 with a few little fiddles. So um, just to show that it is a D50, this is the classic patch, which was the internal uh, one patch one, uh, bank one patch one called Fantasia. It's a very good sample of Fantasia, I'll give it that. It's got everything that Fantasia had. Uh, and if you click on the little drop-down box here, you can see a list of all the other classic sounds. Metal harp, jazz guitar, arco strings, horn selection, living calliope, uh, D50 voices, etc. Slow rote was one of my favourite organ sounds. And it does sound exactly like the original sound. They've sampled it incredibly well. Um, you can go all the way down uh, to cathedral organ. Lovely big cathedral organ. Great. Sounds just like the D50. Um, one thing is this has got over the D50 is it's got almost no self-noise at all. Uh, if you dialed up Cathedral Organ on the D50, it's got a little bit of hiss in the background where the, the AD converters and the DA converters worked. Um, and you can go all the way through these, and I'm not going to go all through them. Um, it would be a bit dull, um, but the classics are all there. Staccato Heaven. And the velocity responsiveness is all in there. They've multi-sampled these, and it really is very nice. Um, it's got all the classics. I mean, digital native dance. Uh, that was bank two, patch one. Let's just make sure I know where that one is. Let's just scroll up the interface a little bit screwy at times. But digital native dance, there we are, bank two, patch one. An absolute classic sound. There in its entirety, and playing back absolutely fine. Okay, so that's what it does. Um, it plays back the preset banks of the Roland D50. Yeah. Um, well, that's great. Um, others have done it in the past and have uh, produced synths that sound like the D50. Uh, this is the D50. That's great. Um, what else does this offer you that uh, the D50 offers you? Nothing. It's just samples. So if I choose a sound, let's choose... Uh, breathy Chiffer, that's a nice little. It's got all the rich tone of the, the original D50. Um, what you haven't got is the chorus effect that the D50 had that made it so fat. It's got uh, a reverb setting. You can choose different reverbs, room, hall, hall, or plate. So we can um, put the plate up a little bit and... 
So you can play with a bit of reverb, which is quite nice. Um, you've got control over the attack, decay, decay, sustain, and release of the amplitude uh, wave. So. That's nice. Um, you can to change the release. Which is quite nice if you want to do that kind of thing. You've got uh, an LFO where you can set between sine square, saw triangle, or um, sample and hold. So you set it to, to sine. You can, you can have the LFO interacting with the pitch. And there we go. You're going to have the LFO actually interacting with coarse pitch, which is kind of cranky. You can have the uh, LFO acting on the filter, so you turn the filter on, play with the cutoff, and then you start to get this horrible cranky noise. We'll come back to the filters later. Um, you can control the uh, amp depth and create a kind of tremolo and you can sync this if you want to with um, your DAW so let's put that back to there so that's your amplitude or your pan and you can make an auto pan type effect well that's the LFO sorted, that's the amplitude sorted, that's the reverb sorted, they all do what they should do. You can fine pitch, you can coarse tune, you can put a limiter on it if you're worried about clipping, um, and you can change the volume of the pan of your individual sound just like you could originally. Uh, you've also got the key track and velocity control, so you can select the velocity to a filter. If the filter's turned on, here we are. Bit cranky there, let's turn that off, or you can put key tracking to release. As you see, the higher you go, the, the slower the release, which is very nice, and you can change the velocity sensitivity up here. Uh, you can tweak all these as much as you want, and you can save it as Breathy Chiffer 2, for instance, and come back and play with that one later. Um, the filter, this is a problem. Um, Roland could have done a better job with their filters. So uh, let's just put the filter on. Uh, let's choose a sound that has a little bit more um, sustain to it. So uh, let's choose, let's choose that cathedral organ actually, and we'll discard those changes and uh, put the filter on. These aren't the best filters in the world. You can get some quite nice effects by tweaking with these two filters. quite nice. You can right click and you can learn these as automation so I can learn that one there we are and I can learn that one there so I can do some quite nice sweeps which is kind of fun um, and you've got an envelope you can assign to them so I could put it all the way up on maximum envelope turn the attack right up And you can see there, it's slowly coming in. You've got a choice between a 12 and 24, and then uh, low pass, band pass, and high pass filters. We're obviously using the low pass filter there to do the low cutoffs, but you could put on high pass, for instance. Oh, let's turn the envelope off. Can play with the passes so interesting stuff 
Um, so it's 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 interesting. Um, I'm sure there are other people which who are, are just going mental over this and think it's fantastic. Um, I've got a D50. I've owned a D50 since 1987, and I think it's a, a great synth. Um, I still use it from time to time. Um, I, I really don't see the benefit of this unless you just want to live the old days, get a little bit nostalgic, dial up uh, Pizza Go Go, which is uh, 44, uh, wrong one, and just do Enya. Uh, and then you're happy. Um, I, I, I think it's going to be an interesting sales pitch to try and sell this to somebody. At the moment, they're giving it away for a couple of months or a month as a free trial on the Roland Cloud website, as well as some other synths. Um, I think this is just to attract you to the fact that they've done some deep sampling of some classic synths. Um, I really wish that Roland had uh, just recreated the D50 with all of its little quirks, with all of its filters, with all of its um, synthesis engine. Um, they could have done that. They know how to do it. They made it. Um, and that would have been a cracking machine, and I would have bought that immediately. Um, but this just seems a little bit cranky. <laughs> 